Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. Today we're going to take a look at the Spring Plugin Project, which has as its core conceit uh, an implementation of this strategy pattern. Basically, you want to defer to runtime the decision about what algorithm or what implementation uh, you use, as opposed to making the decision upfront at compile time, at design time. Uh, and this, you know, this happens all the time. It's so generic. I, I, I think you probably wonder if I'm thinking of something else. But no, I'm actually talking about exactly what you think I'm thinking about, right? Which is like a plugin in an IDE or uh, different strategies for encoding files or, you know, whatever. Anytime you've ever had uh, like some request come in, you want to look at the request and say, okay, based on this, I'm going to use that. Well, yeah, this solves that. This is the very simple uh, plugin approach that you should use. And this thing has been in the Spring ecosystem for, I think, more than a decade. It's a very old project, and it's something that we use in supporting projects, uh, but I don't really think people know about it, and so I thought we'd do a little video here. It is a very small library. It does one thing very well, and uh, I'm super excited for you to see what it's doing. I was actually reminded of it because I realized that the very popular Spring Fox project, which is an open API implementation uh, supporting Swagger, uh, it's a community-driven project, I realized that they are in turn using the Spring plugin project for their Spring integration, uh, which is super cool. So let's dive right into it. Uh, this is going to be a very quick one because by definition it's a very focused, specific project. Uh, and with Spring Boot there's not a lot of work to do anyway. But uh, nonetheless I think you'll get something out of it. And hopefully this will be the thing you reach for next time you want to solve this generic thing that nobody needs to solve anymore. Enjoy. All right, let's build a new Spring Plugins based application. I'm just going to call this Plugins, and we don't really need anything else, so I'll just use Java 17, hit Generate, and go. Now, unsurprisingly, this is not on the Spring Initializer. Uh, it's a very small project. I'm not even sure if you're going to ever need it, but it's just nice to know that it exists. So uh, we'll add it manually to our Maven bill of materials. The dependencies are released, of course. You can find them out there. They've been around for Many, 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 many years. So, pom.xml. We'll go ahead and paste these dependencies. So it's Spring Plugin Core and Spring Plugin Metadata. Uh, for in the package is Org Spring Framework Plugin. We're using 2.0 release. This, of course, can be extracted out into a version property that's common across both of them. So there we go, Spring Plugin Version. There's our property. Let's go ahead and re-import everything. And let's go to the application. Now this is an implementation of the strategy pattern. Basically, you want to choose an algorithm at runtime as opposed to design time. And uh, you know you, we call it Spring Plugin because you can imagine using this for uh, different plugins. You know, in, in, in your IDE or something like that, they have a common in interface that they must comply with. Uh, but really, I think of it as like the strategy pattern, right? So let's go ahead and take a, a very simple look at it. Let's create a situation where we want to have something to write text for us, right? Uh, and how it writes text is kind of, it changes. We might have a different, you know, the user might select a string from a drop down menu, a choice from a drop down menu, and that chooses how we then write the thing, right? So um, I'm going to create an interface here called the writer plugin. So interface writer plugin. And it's going to have a very simple job void write string message. Okay. Now, in order for it to work though, in order for this to work, I need to, it needs to extend plugin. And the predicate that we're going to give it is a string. Now, this is the context object. This is the thing that we can use at runtime to decide whether this plugin is a, able to whether this plugin is able to handle the request. And uh, we do that by asking, do you support T or S or whatever? Where in this case, we've made S a string, right? It could be an enum, it could be a type, it could be whatever. It could be it's like a content type. It could be a lot of different things, right? So we've got that, and let's write a simple example here that uses that and the Spring Plugin API. We're going to create an application runner that, when it starts up, we're going to inject a registry of type writer plugins to context uh, string. So plugins. Okay. Return event. Actually, this could be args. I'm going to say for var format in, let's say, CSV and TXT um, plugins dot get plugins for this one, right? So I'm going to say for that format, 
give me that plugin, get it, and then I'll use it to write the message. And the message, you know, whatever. Hello, Spring plugin. Okay, so I'm using the plugin registry to dynamically ask it for candidates that can handle the format CSV and that can handle the format TXT. Okay, so now we have to actually implement Spring plugin to make that happen. Okay, so first things first, we want to enable plugin registries. And uh, we'll say that the type of registry that we want is a plugin for uh, a registry for writer plugin. And then we're going to implement some, you know, we're going to provide some implementations of this interface. So class, uh, let's see, CSV writer implements writer plugin. So it's a spring bean, right? Mind you, it's a spring bean here, but we have to implement some methods here. Good. And we're going to say, okay, if s dot equals ignore case CSV, then we support it. And if we do, then we'll say, uh, you know, whatever. I don't, it doesn't have to be anything. Writing message, writing CSV, right? So message, whatever. That's nothing particularly CSV about it, but you can see that this is be running because of the log. And then we're going to do the same thing for just plain text, okay? So uh, text writer implements writer plugin. Okay, and we're going to say, uh, system out writing text. Okay, and um, s dot equals ignore case text. So we've got CSV, TXT. We've got two different implementations. We're going to ask for one of each. Let's go ahead and start the application and see what we get. All right, writing CSV, hello plugin, writing uh, text, hello spring plugin. Right, so you can see it's it's a uh, pretty trivial, right? And obviously, if we only had one type, let's just say for, uh, let's just say CSV, there you go, that would work too. So this is it's a little bit different than just injecting all the beans of type writer pl plugin. Here we actually have the d ability to dynamically select based on an advertised capability. This is very convenient because now you can conditionally involve certain objects based on certain use cases. And that's it, my friends. I there's a a lot of other stuff relating to using Spring Plugin in an XML application context from 10 years ago, uh, or you know things like that. But the, you just saw the the basics of it. That's more than most people are going to need. And um, as always, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.